I've decided that what I'm going to do with my five minutes from now on is conduct lessons in parliamentary procedure. Dealing with an arbitrary chair. Up to this point, we've been describing ways to deal with fractures, members, and meetings. What can members do when the chair is arbitrary and is the cause of the problems within the organization? First, determine if the chair possesses these negative characteristics. One, refuses to recognize members. Two, ignores points of order. Three, ignores appeal. Four, will not put legitimate motions to a vote. Five, rejects proper amendments. Six, interrupts members during debate. Seven, seizes the floor. Eight, violates the bylaws. Nine, refuses to protect the will of the majority. <coughs> Ten, refuses to protect the rights of the minority, is arrogant towards members and guests, is abusive towards members and guests, imposes his or her will on the group, increases the agenda, deviating from it at will, and adjourns meetings against the will of the members. If the behavior of the chair of your organization hits five or more of these characteristics, you are dealing with an arbitrary, dictatorial, presiding officer. What can you and other officers and members do with this situation? Try some of the following measures. First, begin the discussion. Since I'm going to be conducting these lessons for a long time, I can take the time to try and get you to discuss this. Now, it's apparent to everybody that's ever seen one of these meetings that you have committed at least seven of the acts that designate an arbitrary chair. Do you recognize them? That's going to make discussion really hard. I guess we'll skip discussion and go to use a point of order. Okay, now since the audience can't do that, that would be the obligation of one of you other folks. One of the points that should have been made, or a motion that should have been made, and I'm really hot about this, is when you told a decorated veteran of a foreign war that his blood only earned four minutes here in Pogonville, you overstepped your boundaries. And I blame the rest of council for not moving to suspend the rules and to allow that citizen to speak for as long as he wanted, not as long as it was convenient for the chair. That is the most despicable, cowardly, overreach of parliamentary procedure I have ever seen. And shame on council for letting him get away with it. I'll continue with this lesson at the next meeting. 